Yes, that's right. In today's 100 days video, I'll be surviving 100 days whilst being chased by an immortal snail in Minecraft Hardcore. Will the snail catch and kill me? Keep watching to find out. Also, just before we start, the snail is super intelligent, so it can break blocks, place blocks, and even travel through dimensions. Anyways, let's go. What if the snails were the killers? A snail that can never die. Eat the snail. It's going for you at all times. Immortal snail. There's a <laughs> snail hunting you down, and you're immortal, and it's immortal. <laughs> I spawned in and I was immediately very paranoid about where the snail might come from. Then I spotted it. And sure enough, it was heading towards me with murderous intent, which actually scared me quite a lot. So I ran away and tried to get a few essentials, wooden tools, stone tools, you know how it goes. All the time whilst I was doing this, I was keeping a watchful eye on the immortal snail. I then decided to see what it would do if I built up and well, this happened. Oh my God. What the hell? The snail is so smart. I then tried to get a little bit of distance from the snail, but it soon caught up. And in fact, it nearly snuck up on me, but luckily I heard it coming. I decided to craft a boat to get away and managed to travel a few hundred blocks where I killed a few more animals to get some food. Food is gonna be very important in these 100 days because although I'm immortal, having low hunger will slow me down and the snail will be able to catch me. As it was becoming night, the snail caught up to me and I didn't have enough wool to make a bed. So I I just trained the snail around for the night like I was playing Call of Duty Zombies but with a snail. By day two I decided if I was going to stand a chance against the snail and actually make some progress I'd need to create some space between me and the snail. So I got myself a boat and spent all day traveling as far as possible away from the snail. By day three I had bought myself some time with the traveling so it was time to get some supplies. Firstly I spent some time murdering the local wildlife including this cute little pig family. Also now I actually have had some time to cook it without worrying about the immortal snail sneaking up on me. And on day three, I finally managed to get some sleep. The next day, I found a cave and these zombies definitely weren't a fan of my immortality. Then I began mining for some iron tools. No point in getting armor because the only thing that can kill me is this guy. Anyways, whilst I'm mining, let me tell you about my three goals for these 100 days. I want to build a nice house to relax in after a long day of running away from the snail. I also want to kill the ender dragon before the snail kills me. And finally, I want to try and trap the snail in an obsidian box and just see what happens. Later on in the cave, I thought I heard the snail coming for me, but it turns out it was just a monster from today's video sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is a free-to-play game available on both iOS and Android. In the game, you build a world and fill it with habitats for your monsters. There are hundreds of monsters to collect with different rarities and elements. Breed your monsters to create cool new species and limitless combinations. And you can level up your monsters to create the best team possible. Then put that team to the test in action-packed battles and different PvP modes like the adventure map. Or even fight in real time against your friends. There are brand new events every week to discover. And one of my favorite things is the YouTuber Island, where you can find the monsters of some of the biggest YouTubers. That's not all. If you download the game through the link in the description, you'll get these amazing rewards that will boost your Monster Legends experience. Oh, and be sure to download it before the 6th of February, as this is a limited time deal. During my time in the cave, it was safe to say I got shot a few times. But that didn't stop me from crafting up some fresh iron tools. I didn't really think a shield was going to protect me from the snail, so I ended up just giving it to this cow. He was pretty grateful. When I emerged from the cave, it was day five and I was getting worried that the snail was gonna show up soon. So throughout the day, I kept a watchful eye on the horizon and sure enough, there he was. As driven as ever and hungry for lockdown life blood. I tried to slow him down with some wolves, but he outsmarted me and kept moving forward. I got stuck and thought it was all over, but I managed to escape by the skin of my teeth. And after that terrifying encounter, I thought taming some dogs would cheer me up and maybe even scare the snail away. But I was wrong. The snail was hot on my heels for the rest of the day, but thankfully, at the end of the day, I managed to find a safe spot to sleep. By day six, I was starting to feel like I didn't belong anywhere, and I wanted to at least have a little home where I could feel safe for a few days. So I began gathering some materials and traveling as far away from the snail as possible. Then by day eight, I had a lot of distance from the snail, so I spent some time finding a nice place to build a starter base and got to work making myself a nice little home.
And on day 13, I woke up feeling refreshed and added the finishing touches to my house. It was looking very nice. I then killed another wandering trader and wondered what would happen if I tried to put a lead on the immortal snail. But then I felt it, the ever so familiar presence of the slimy devil. Then it began. The snail broke into my once safe home and continued to pursue me with no remorse. It drove me out of my home. All of that worked for nothing and I couldn't do anything to stop it. I hate that snail. The next day I wanted to do some more exploring. So I set off in search of some villages and anything else that will help me outrun the snail. At one point I tried to trap the snail in a ravine, but of course it was able to get out. Oh, and the reason I wanted to find some villages was so I could get myself a horse and be able to get away from the snail fast at any time. So later on in the day when I finally found a village, I was delighted. I immediately started searching the houses for chests and almost died getting this orange bed. Then I got distracted killing some cats, but lost track of the snail. I was so scared that the snail would be able to sneak up on me. My head was literally on a swivel looking for him. But eventually I gave up and went back to searching houses. This is when I turned around and saw the snail a few blocks behind me. Oh my God. Anyways, I continued running till I found another village where I checked the chest and this time managed to get my a saddle barely before the snail got to me. I then ran back to the horses I saw at the other village and managed to tame a horse just in time to escape from the snail. After a dramatic day 14, day 15 was a fun day spent taunting the snail for being really slow. By day 16, I'd had enough of snailing around, so I said bye to the snail and headed off to make some progress. I used the rest of day 16 and a couple more days to travel a long distance away from the snail. Oh, and some cool things happened. I got some TNT from a desert temple took my horse water skiing and also met this shy polar bear. On the morning of day 19, I made this nice little snail lookout house so I could always see the snail coming. I had learned from my last mistakes. Then I decided it was time to make some more progress as these iron tools weren't doing it for me anymore. I was hungry for diamonds. So I tunneled down and found a mine shaft and was greeted by lots of mobs. My immortality was being put to the test. At one point I was burning in lava, was poisoned by a spider and being attacked by a zombie all at the same time. Nothing could hurt me, but it was getting kind of annoying. So I decided to do most of my mining by strip mining. So cue a nice little strip mining montage. Let's go. When I returned home on day 25, there was still no sign of the snail, so I used this opportunity to craft myself a full set of diamond tools. I then sat out with a bucket of water to find a lava pool. Oh, and before I get like a million comments telling me the snail was right next to me, these are just some normal snails. Anyways, I searched into the night and I eventually found a lava pool. Then the next day, I expertly made myself a nether portal, but just before I lit it, I heard something behind me. So I quickly lit it and traveled into the nether. Once in the nether, I hid behind some netherite and sure enough, the immortal snail had found me and had traveled into the nether. The chase was on. Throughout the next few days, the snail was hot on my trail as I scoured the unforgiving nether terrain in search for a nether fortress. By day 30, I had managed to get to the nether fortress. Now came the difficult task of killing blazes whilst also avoiding a snail that would kill me instantly if it touches me. The hardest part was staying alert whilst on fire because it was hard to hear the snail placing blocks. There were a few close calls, but by the end of the day, I had 11 blaze rods, which would be more than enough for my goal of killing the ender dragon. So the next day, I scammed and my way back to the nether portal, but the snail was waiting there. I managed to teleport before he got to me, but as soon as I arrived in the overworld, a pigman launched me into the lava pool, slowing me down enough so the snail could teleport and get about one block away from me. I barely escaped with my life. The snail must have paid off that pigman and it nearly worked. I wondered what other tricks he might have up his little snail sleeves. On day 32, I sprinted back to my snail lookout and gathered all my valuable items. I then grabbed my horse, which I had unofficially named Horatio, and ran for the hills. I traveled day and night to escape the clutch of the snail until on day 34 I found refuge in this familiar looking terracotta village in which I began scheming my plan to kill the ender dragon without being killed by the snail itself. I thought it was kind of weird I was more scared of the snail than I was the ender dragon. But anyways the next step was to gather as many ender pills as I could get my hands on. I'd had enough of the nether so I decided to go into the desert and slaughter any enderman I could find. I also killed other mobs too as it was 
was no risk to me and I needed XP. This habit then continued for a couple of days. During the day, I would relax with the local villagers and gather a few resources. And at night, I would hunt. Meanwhile, the snail grew ever closer. By day 38, I finally had enough ender pills, so I crafted up the eyes. But I kind of found myself wanting to have some fun. So I spent the rest of the day building this TNT launcher and having an amazing amount of fun launching myself in the air with uh, nine pieces of TNT. Yeah, I could only do this once. The next day, I found out the direction of the stronghold just in case the snail came. And I wanted to have some better tools before I faced the ender dragon. As if he knocks me into the void, it's all over. I wouldn't die, I'd just be falling for all eternity. And to be honest, that didn't sound fun. So I spent the rest of the day planting sugarcane. And on days 40, 41, and 42, when the sugarcane was growing, I was collecting everything else I needed for a level 30 enchant table. This included murdering the entire cow population and committing my fair share of deforestation. I even killed a few horses. Sorry, Horatio. Oh, and by day 43, my old friend the snail was back. But I finally had enough resources for my enchant table. So I set it up and trained the snail around. Meanwhile, getting some pretty nice enchants on my tools. Including looting three, which was kind of annoying because it would have helped me a lot when I was collecting ender pearls. Anyways, after I did my enchants, I collected up my enchantment setup and admired what the snail had built. The next day, I gave the snail a flower to see if it would stop chasing me. It didn't. Then I grabbed Horatio the horse, and for the rest of the day, we gained some decent distance from the snail, whilst running towards the end portal. Also, during this time, I threw two ender eyes in a row, and both of them broke. I was very annoyed. Oh, what the hell? Anyways, by day 45, we finally found the stronghold, and I was sure the snail wasn't far behind. I tried my best to locate the portal quickly, but I couldn't find it, and I was beginning to panic. Then I saw his gamer tag through the walls. It had caught up with me. I had to find the portal now, and luckily I found this cave that exposed the portal room. Silverfish tried to slow me down, and I could hear him getting closer. Then I saw him running at me, so I quickly placed the eyes and leapt through the portal. I then frantically built up to the main island, closely followed by the immortal snail. I used the ender pearls to traverse the massive obsidian pillars and destroy the first few end crystals. Meanwhile, also keeping an eye out for the snail. I used my looting three sword to farm up some ender pearls, and these would come in very useful later in the fight. I kept trying to destroy the crystals, but the dragon wasn't making it easy, and I saw evidence of the snail wherever I went. A few end crystals in, I saw him. He was right behind me, rushing to build up to me. But my ender pearls kept me safe. It was following me everywhere I went, so I had to be fast. When I thought all the end crystals were dead, I began killing the dragon once it came to perch on the portal, whilst keeping a close watch on the snail. Eventually, I realized the dragon wasn't dying, and there was one end crystal left. So I took care of it, and now it was time for the dragon to die. I waited on the pillars until the dragon came down, and then I pearled it into the middle. This technique allowed me to get a lot of hits on the dragon, whilst also keeping a safe distance from the snail. The dragon's health was draining away, and the snail couldn't do anything to stop it. My pearls enabled me to dodge the snail and land a few more hits. And that was it. I had killed the ended dragon and completed my first goal of these 100 days. I was very happy, but I didn't have time to celebrate as the snail was closing in on me. But then unexpectedly, it jumped into the portal. And just like that, it was gone. I had no idea what this meant. But I used this time to grab the egg and then it was time to return to the overworld. So I dove into the portal and spawned back at my bed I had placed in the stronghold, which I thought meant the snail must be at spawn, so I had some time. I then went up to the surface and eventually found Horatio and began running away from the area. But my next focus was gonna be on the snail-proof house. Now this snail is really OP, so I'm not even sure if this is gonna be possible, but we'll try our best. Anyways, for this, we were gonna need slime, so I set off in a direction looking for a swamp. But during my travels, I stopped to get more food and saw the snail sneaking up on me. That's when it dawned on me. Earlier in the video, I had been wondering why the snail didn't have a shell. But now I understood. The super smart snail had gotten rid of its shell so it could move faster. That must be why it jumps and moves like a rabbit, right? Anyways, it wasn't all bad because soon after I saw this nice looking area and this cute little fox family. I did think about murdering them, but even I'm not that evil. It took a while, but eventually on day 53, we arrived at a swamp. And I found this blacked out horse and I thought it looked really cool. It kind of looked like it had all white eyes. It also had more health than Horatio, 
so I had to tame it. It took a few tries, but eventually he was mine. However, this did mean I sadly had to let Horatio go, as I only had one saddle. So I gave him a diamond and set him free from the curse of the snail. Then I equipped Horatio version 2.0 with the saddle and armor, and he looked even cooler. Also, I had to kill his baby horse so he would focus on the mission. And for now, that mission was moving around during the day and hunting slimes at night. The looting three sword helped a lot. And by day 55, I had plenty of slime, but Horatio version 2.0's health wasn't looking so good. I then decided to go exploring, looking for a nice location to build the house. And what better way to do this than by doing some horse tree parkour? Yeah, you could say Horatio version 2 had hops. Anyways, on my travels, I saw a lot of cool things. I saw a baby snail. I also saw this cool natural lava cast and ran into a cactus while looking at it. Then I murdered some squid for fun and spotted a very random grass block. Next, I got spat on by a couple of llamas. And then finally, I found this ruined nether portal that had enough obsidian to be fixed. So I decided to fix it to see where it went. And to my surprise, it teleported me straight into a nether fortress. I then saw a chest and checked it out and there was another saddle in it, which gave me hope of getting Horatio back. But when I headed back into the overworld, Horatio version 2 was gone. I looked around and thought I was going to have to tame Horatio version 3. But at that moment, I turned around and there he was like nothing happened. Then by day 58, I had found a nice location for my house. So I got to work mining for some redstone. And whilst I'm doing that, let me show you my plan for this base. So my plan was to get sticky pistons and make an underground anti-snail bunker with an emergency escape hatch and double layer doors. So there will be a normal looking house on top, which the snail will think I live in. But on the floor, there will be sticky pistons that will open up and allow me to drop into a super secret snail bunker. Really fun underground oh and by the way there's more to this plan but you'll find out about that a bit later on then on day 60 i emerged with enough redstone for the plan and began gathering a few more resources to build my starter house then it was time to get building Building the secret door took a bit longer than I thought it would, but eventually I managed to get it working. And on day 63, the secret trap door was fully working and the starter house on top was looking very natural. But that's when the snail arrived. He suspected nothing, but the bottom of my secret base wasn't fully complete yet. So I decided to run. Plus, I kind of needed to drag the snail away from my base. So I gathered up some resources and headed for the end portal. I figured a good use of this time would be to search the end islands for an elytra, as that would make it a lot easier to avoid the snail. I used my leftover ender eyes to find the stronghold, and on the night before I entered it, I killed a few creepers to get gunpowder for rockets. On the morning of day 64, I trapped Horatio V2 in a hole and struggled to find the portal. But when I eventually found it and traveled into the end, I murdered 50. 50 endermen for their juicy pearls. Then it was time to visit the end islands, but the gateway was over the void, which was a bit scary. So I carefully built up and built myself a nice safe cobble platform. Then I threw a pearl through and landed safely on an island. Sometimes that can be a bit glitchy, so I was thankful to make it through alive. Anyways, then began a quest for an end city. Whilst on my search, I discovered that you can eat chorus fruits whilst you're on full hunger. I also did some semi-risky pills and saw this random void block. Then eventually, I found this tiny end city and I was pretty sure it didn't have a ship. However, I used this opportunity to explore it and murder some shulkers. Then I used their shells to craft up my first shulker box and my inventory felt a lot cleaner. As I was searching for a good end city, I began to wonder what the snail might be doing and if he could even use the end gateway portals. But my thoughts were interrupted by finding this beautiful end city and guess what? It actually had a ship. And I decided to save the best till last, so I left the ship and went straight into the city to murder lots of annoying shulkers. And I managed to get my hands on some pretty decent loot too, but quite a lot of it was useless because I'm immortal and I have no use for armor. Then it was time for the end ship. My pill barely missed it and I fell. But when I came back up, I noticed some strange cobble pillars that could only mean one thing. The snail had found me and I didn't have much time to get this elytra, so I quickly pilled 
and rushed to grab it. I didn't even have time to get the dragon's head. The snail was right behind me, so I used some pearls to get away. The race was on to find the gateway. It was me versus the snail. If the snail won, he might be able to get the jump on me. Everything was on the line. I ran as fast as I could, pearling everywhere and destroying Enderman when I ran out of pearls. Eventually, I found a gateway, but I didn't know if it was too late. I cautiously went through, checking all my angles and making sure it couldn't get the jump on me. Until eventually, I made it home safe and sound. Well, at least I thought I did. Day 70 was my first day back at home, and I celebrated my safe return home by having a relaxing day fishing in my beautiful area, all whilst daydreaming about the further plans of my base. So the plan was when the snail eventually finds my base, I would fall into my secret bunker and run along a connecting tunnel with sticky piston doors. Then I would fly up the tunnel using my elytra and some rockets and escape the snail before he got into my base. So with the plan in mind, it was time to get to work. I started by gathering a bunch of resources, wood, stone, and other resources. Then it was time to turn the plan into a reality. The first thing I did was make a secret getaway tunnel. I then used sticky pistons to create an automatically relocking door. So when I pressed this button at the bottom and started flying up, the door would unlock and enable me to escape the snail whilst also relocking behind me so the snail couldn't fall into my base. Then I connected this tunnel with my underground bunker. Now it was time to convert it from looking like a cave to looking like an underground mansion. On day 76, I added a few more important finishing touches to the underground base, and then it was rehearsal time. Basically, I wanted to see if my idea would work, and the only way to test that would be to get the snail to come to my base. But before I did the real test, I wanted to try it out a few times first, just to make sure I'd actually be able to escape the snail. So I pretended to see the snail, then pressed the button to fall into my bunker, and proceeded to run through the iron doors to the getaway tunnel. I had some problems with the timing and the rockets, but I eventually got it down and by the end of the day i felt confident to use it in the event of a snail attack but now i actually wanted to test it on the real thing so i spent all of day 77 building a little parkour course and having some fun meanwhile the snail was moving closer and closer until on day 78, the snail arrived and I got to use my escape method. The snail had no idea what happened and I got away easily with zero risk of ever being touched by the snail. It was definitely a success, which meant I had completed my second goal of these 100 days. I then spent the rest of the day playing with the snail until at one point I got a little bit too close, so I decided to explore a bit instead. On day 79, I had one more goal left to complete in these 100 days, and that was to attempt to trap the evil immortal snail. For this, I was going to need a lot of obsidian, and to be honest, I didn't really feel like using a diamond pickaxe. So my plan was to go and get myself some netherite. This would save me some time mining obsidian, but to be honest, I kind of just wanted a cool looking netherite pickaxe. So with this goal in mind, I spent the next couple of days wandering around my world, shearing every wild sheep I saw. I didn't really feel like breeding my own sheep because I was kind of scared the snail would kill them. Oh, and also during this time, I journeyed back over to the stronghold and reunited with Horatio version 2.0. But then sadly on my way back to base, Horatio version 2 and I were jumped by a gang of skeletons and Horatio was sadly shot to death. Rest in peace, Horatio V2. I now had plenty of wood and wool, so I grabbed a couple of empty shulker boxes and some more food and headed into the restored nether portal. Then I tunneled down and began exploding beds at Y level 15. I wasn't getting very lucky, but I soon had enough ancient debris to get my pickaxe. However, I decided to see how much I could get with my beds, and so I continued blasting away. I had nearly run out of beds when I heard the snail behind me, which gave me enough time to barely escape him. That was a close one. I decided to leave the rest of the beds. They were the snails now. Then I returned back to the overworld feeling lucky to still be alive. I didn't want to lead the snail straight back to my base, so I decided to head away from my base 
and gather some food. The next day, I stumbled across this village. And the villagers kind of reminded me of my recent hardcore Minecraft episode where I made an automatic villager prison. You should definitely watch it after this video. Anyways, for the rest of the day, I massacred the village and then got the iron golem to throw me up in the air like he was playing with me. Afterwards, I murdered him too. And then some more villagers for good measure. Yeah, I don't think the villagers liked me. Anyways, after killing some skeletons on the night of day 89, I finally found a dog and fed him a bone. When we were back at base, I gave him the traditional blue collar, and you guys already know what he's called. It's Mark, he had come to join me in this 100 days world. And for the rest of the day, Mark stood guard whilst I sorted out my inventory. Then on day 91, it was time to craft up my godlike obsidian pickaxe. I smelted up the ancient debris, enchanted a fresh diamond pickaxe, and got grinding to make this the most efficient pickaxe possible. The curse of vanishing didn't matter because I literally can't die except from the snail. It was complete and I adequately named it the obsidian obliterator but i did have to google how to spell obliterator oops anyways it had everything i would need to melt through obsidian there was just one thing that would make it even easier and that was a beacon so i rushed back into the nether keeping an eye out for the snail and began murdering wither skeletons for three days straight at first i wasn't getting very lucky and it took a lot of skeletons to get my first head but then soon after the magic that is looting three kicked in and i got two heads from this group of four wither skeletons which is absolutely insane i wanted to keep this luck going so i continued murdering as many wither skeletons as i could then on day 95 i began fighting two withers at the same time the withers tried to run but i caught up to them and they were no match for a mortal lockdown life and soon enough i turned them both into wither stars i then grabbed some resources for a beacon and headed back to my base to smelt them up we wouldn't have enough resources for a full beacon but we had just enough to get two mini beacons I even had to borrow all the resources from my trophy room. Sorry, Dragon Egg. Then the next day, I hopped into the end and flew over to the obsidian pillars where I used some obsidian to craft my beacons. I managed to get speed one and haste one to help with my mining. And this was pretty much my situation for the rest of day 96 and all of day 97, with the occasional look around for the snail. After doing this, it was time to build the trap. And by day 99, it was ready. I even added a few signs to let the snail know how I felt. Anyways, let's get Get serious here was my plan it was pretty simple i would lure the snail into my trap and quickly place the obsidian in the gaps to trap the snail in this scenario with the snail trapped i could live out the rest of my immortal life as a god but that's only if this worked i rehearsed it over and over and when i saw the snail on day 100 i was ready he looked the same as always determined it was like all his attempts to touch me didn't affect him at all. He was a machine, but it was time for action. I carefully lured him into the obsidian cage. I then ran out and sealed the cage behind me and he was trapped. I had completed all of my goals and I was free. What? Be sure to check out Monster Legends in the description down below to get some awesome rewards. And watch one of these videos next.